The Ford Fiesta first arrived on the market in the late 1970s and quickly became a best-seller in the small car class. Superior design and engineering and a wide range of variants made the little car a big winner across the forecourts of Europe. 25 years on, a later generation of designers have come up with a version for the 21st century. A small car with a big heart, it stays true in every way to the original concept of Fiesta. planners had started work long before 1973 when the Arab oil crisis rocked the world because they'd long since detected a changing attitude to motoring a powerful trend towards the smaller car and the oil shortage which for a while almost emptied the streets served only to confirm their judgment some people will always find a solution to any problem however precariously. Some might pool their resources. Others, the lucky ones, can always afford to pay for their pleasures. But a growing army of middle income earners had been moving to smaller, more economic, well-packaged cars with 850 to 1300 cc engines. Now more were joining them. Motorists who used to buy bigger used cars now discovered that the same price would get them brand new economical models with all the room they needed. Then there were the two car families wanting smaller second cars and all of these buyers demanded the same qualities. Low price, reliability, economic servicing, roominess, style and safety. The positive qualities of larger cars with the added bonus of low cost of ownership. Ford product planners had laid down a detailed strategy for the designers and engineers. The brief was clear. Ford was going to be one of the last manufacturers to break into this market. And that gave them a very compelling reason to be the best. Ford must produce the most outstanding small car the world had ever seen. First, they studied their market on a worldwide scale, in almost microscopic detail. And as early as 1972, they were already examining the results. These carried an unmistakable message. The new Ford car must be really new. The market wanted neither a cut-down Escort 
nor a copy of competitors' products. Then it was for market research to confirm the planner's ideas. Thousands of street and home interviews were run from end to end of Europe in the biggest investigation Ford has ever done on any product. Highly sophisticated research clinics were set up like this one at Lausanne. Nearly a thousand people, all small car buyers from each of the five main markets, were flown here to spend many hours appraising mock-ups and competitive cars. When they went home again, they left behind them a mass of data for the researchers to digest. And while much of that data confirmed that the design group was right, some of it inspired new ideas, first as paper sketches, then as two-dimensional drawings. And finally, as full-scale clay models every detail perfectly represented. To bring the clay to life, instant paint. Plastic sheets layered and smoothed over the finished model. Since the aerodynamic lines of a car can have a very direct bearing on its fuel economy, one-fifth scale models of the final design were extensively tested in the wind tunnel. And in experiments as exhaustive as these, even the shape of the underbody is crucial. Wet paint was used on the models to identify areas of drag which could affect factors like fuel economy and wind noise. They studied every aspect of interior comfort using a package buck, a passenger compartment adjustable to fit every shape of human being. And they invited every shape of human being to come and tailor make his or her own seating and control positions. Then, using a computer to strike a scientifically balanced average, the designers perfected just about the ideal driving position. Now came the time to start turning clay into metal. So each critical dimension was taken from the models. And whole see-through cars were built so that every moving part of their bodies could be studied in action. Then steel was hammered by skilled hands into the first Fiesta prototypes. Those prototypes and all the components in them were put through a brutal series of safety tests. To gauge the impact strength of the wheel rims, a one-ton weight was dropped onto wheel and tire. checking that the steering column will collapse safely against the driver's chest on impact. A test on the strength and safety of the body structure. Sudden, savage deceleration to see if the seat mountings would distort. Graphic computer analysis of body detail, too, was an integral part of the development program. And from these and many other studies, positive improvements were made. For instance, they strengthened the front suspension strut link to the body giving better ride and handling and making sure of a stronger, more reliable engine mounting.
And then they tested the car again. In Dunson, England, and Merkinik, Germany, the Ford Engineering Centers, indoor and outdoor testing continued in parallel. Since extreme heat and cold can obviously affect a carburetor, they tested those in an atmospheric cell capable of reproducing the most extreme climatic conditions. They ran non-stop checks on door catches and locks, equivalent to years of normal use. They drove round the clock, in all conditions. Through its umbilical cord, Fiesta fed back data to its mother car on suspension, body stress, vibration, noise. Everything that could affect comfort and reliability. To make absolutely sure Fiesta would meet its design objectives, they conducted the most comprehensive test program ever, driving the car intensively over distances twice as far as to the moon and back. Night and day, they continue track testing with 75 drivers. They usually prefer special seats to meet the strenuous demands of their job, but so comfortable are Fiesta seats that the drivers asked especially for them to be left in. And to add to the comfort, up-to-the-minute fabrics and materials were tried and compared, looking for the ultimate in smart, restful interior design. Just one of the many subjects presented weekly to specially appointed fit and finish committees. Their sole objective was to ensure that although Ford were not to be the first into the small car market, they would be the best. This is possibly the coldest place on earth. Here they create the worst the weather can do. They test the car's resistance to gale force winds. To blistering heat. All to make sure the driving environment is comfortable, whatever the climate. In real life conditions, they went on to prove these prototypes beyond all normal limits, testing their front wheel driven ride and handling. But they wanted a car whose every component was proved beyond doubt. With easy positive gear shift, stable road hold, all weather performance and inbuilt safety. And throughout their thorough testing, detailed results were fed back to the engineers so they could adapt, refine and perfect. On the road in the test bed, they gave the new engine and transaxle a brutal hammering. Throwing the gear in and out at 7,000 RPM hundreds of times over. They proved Fiesta's safety on a two-wheel blowout. Steel ply radial tires and dual line brakes are standard. If one circuit should ever fail, the other still gives satisfactory braking. Fiesta stops in a safe, straight line. While Ford's new car was being designed and perfected, so were the plants that would produce it. In no fewer than five different European countries, more than 412,000 square meters of new manufacturing capacity were programmed. 
including the construction of two brand new plots. The whole massive building and tooling program cost about $740 million. Probably the biggest sum of money ever spent for the production of a new car. One of the new plants, Valencia, was the biggest single construction ever undertaken by the company anywhere in the world. It was designed to produce 1,560 engines and assemble 1,058 complete fiestas every single day. The building stretched for three and a half kilometers. There are 9.6 kilometers of roads, 12 kilometers of railways, and a total land area of 642 acres. That's big by any standards. Inside the plant, conveyors span nearly 11 kilometers, and the power cable stretch for 380. 63 presses equipped the press shop, the most up to the minute of its kind in the world. And the electricity and general services here would support a town of 40,000 people. The very latest automation is standard, bringing a unique precision and efficiency to every stage of production. In Belfast, Northern Ireland, Ford's unique sonic idle carburetors are made. These are winners of a design award for technical innovation. At idling speeds in town traffic, they cut petrol consumption and exhaust emission. Each one is individually checked 100%. Engine castings are manufactured at Dagenham, England. But to handle production of transaxles, Ford built another completely new $60 million plant at Bordeaux in France. They'd already designed for Fiesta, what was unquestionably the best four-speed transmission in the industry. And they weren't going to settle for second best. Again, every single unit is checked 100%. In Basildon, England, the radiators for Fiesta are produced. Saar Louis in Germany makes body panel stampings and assemblies for all the other plants across Europe. final assembly is done at Saar Louis and Dagnum, as well as at Valencia. Producing by techniques that verge on the futuristic, no fewer than 2,040 new Fiestas at a consistent high quality every day. For instance, a Ford process welds together an entire car body structure in one single operation. And so the Ford Fiesta, designed and proved internationally, is built internationally as well. And that's logical, for this is a car with worldwide potential. And now, at showrooms across Europe and motor shows like this, Fiesta was to meet its public. This is the moment of truth, the moment of first time meeting between a great new car and its critical, rational audience. Eager to see how Ford, with Fiesta, could improve on existing cars in its class. Fiesta arrived on the 
Fossil Thoughts, a multi-million pound project which became immediately popular with the car buying public. In 1978, it became the first complete car to be granted a coveted Design Council Award. And by 1979, the production of the Fiesta had already reached its first million. Fiesta reached the market, it was highly competitive in every aspect against its closest rivals. In some areas, the little car outstripped all the others in its class. The Mark I's performance, road holding and handling was second to none, and its negative scrub steering geometry ensured that Fiesta stopped in a straight line. As this Fiesta hurtled down the jetty, we detonated a front tyre. Fiesta really did stop in a straight line, which even surprised the driver. Superior build quality, load space and comfort made Fiesta immediately popular right across Europe. Fiesta's range and options were extensive too. The economical saloon with low waistline for safe all-round vision. The comfortable L version with sleek styling, tasteful trim and coordinated lines in cloth upholstery. The stylish S with sporty suspension and a powerful but economic 1117 engine. Then the top of the range, prestigious gear alloy wheels, an optional vinyl top, and detachable sunshine roof and lavish trim. It even had a secret lockable compartment in the boot to keep valuables safe. The Fiesta soon rose through the UK sales charts to join other Ford vehicles at the top. After the Cortina and Escort, the Fiesta became the third best-selling car in the country at the time, with owners of other makes queuing to trade up to Ford's new baby. In October 1980, the Supersport joined the ranks with the 1300cc Kent Crossflow engine, the first sporty Fiesta by Ford, with RS alloy wheels and a smart body kit. The XR2 was Ford's Christmas present in December of 81. The appearance of the car was improved with round head and spot lamps and indicators fitted in the bumpers. It used the 1600cc engine from the American version of the Fiesta but with a Weber carburetor for higher performance. It had uprated and slightly lowered suspension, and a rear anti-roller, and of course the distinctive Pepperpot 13x6 alloy wheels. The Mark I ceased production in August 1983, making way for the Mark II. It had dropped to number five in the UK sales charts, but even then, still selling over 100,000 units per year. There is a little car that thinks it's a big car. Ford's slogan at the time was Ford gives you more. And the Mark II showed off new rounded lines and many new improvements, displaying Ford's ability to design more car into less space. It had curves instead of hard angles, new wraparound bumpers, wide body side mouldings, distinctive wheel covers and a deep front end spoiler. The new body shell was designed for aerodynamic efficiency. It had new headlamps, wraparound indicators, 13-inch wheels, and a rear light cluster incorporating reversing lights. 
flowing curves and body shape reduced turbulence and cut down on wind noise. An interior tailgate release gave access to the seven cubic feet of luggage space, but when the split seats were pushed down, an impressive 35 cubic feet of load space was available. The comprehensive dash was fitted with radio and cassette player with four balanced speakers. All controls were easily available to hand. An ergonomic layout, excellent instrumentation. sunroof, a multifunction digital clock, and plenty of room inside a very well equipped little car. The Mark II featured a newly designed Valencia engine, 950 or 100 cc to begin with, but a 1300 cc appeared shortly after. In 1983, the L and Via models were given the first 1300cc CVH compound valve hemispheric. With it came a five speed gearbox on all 1300, 1400, and 1600 models. Shortly after, a 1.6 diesel became available in the popular plus L cars, and in 86 came a 1.4 lean burn CVH for the L and Gear. Underneath, a comprehensive anti-corrosion treatment helped Fiesta keep its value. With the change in emission rules in the mid-80s, car manufacturers were being forced to clean up their act. Improvements to the CVH engine with a five-speed box also benefited the driver with greater fuel economy. In 1986, the Fiesta did 52.3 miles per gallon at 56 miles an hour. The Mark II also benefited from a retuned suspension giving a better ride, and its rack and pinion steering offered the driver a more direct response. Now there's a little car that thinks it's big. The new Ford Fiesta. It's got new big car looks, smoother, more efficient. New trim for big car comfort. And a new big car dash. It's even got an optional five speed for quiet big car cruising. Happily though, it's still just as nippy and just as much fun to drive as the Fiesta has always been. It may think it's big, but it's still quite small. The new Ford Fiesta. The little car that thinks big. research and development program years before launching an all-new Fiesta. The Mark III's development team motto was not to use customers as test drivers. They set out to check every detail themselves. Probe teams were set up in England and Germany to build better prototypes, identifying problems early on, 
so that the highest standards could be assured when the car went into full production. Customer search clinics also played a vital role in the creation of the new car. Attention was given to tiny details, fashion, ergonomics and style. Engine changes were introduced to meet European emission controls and in a new drivability test chamber, the prototype Fiesta's performance was monitored in laboratory conditions. With the ability to reproduce extreme climates from the humidity of a tropical rainforest to the intense cold of the Arctic. And after two years and 25 different models, the design group had achieved its objective. The result, a car with wide contours, an efficient shape and a smooth 60 degree screen angle, plus improved visibility and load carrying capacity, and a wraparound tailgate for easier loading. Integrated rear lights, large and set high for safety. Wheels set out at the corners, giving the car poise and balance. Longer wheelbase and wide doors made it easier to get in and out, and the ergonomic interior design maximised comfort and control. The Mark III didn't disappoint with range and choice of models either, right from the economy of the popular three- and five-door versions on up to a new XR2 Turbo. made of aluminium, which made it half the weight of its predecessor. Equipment was improved too, ABS, driver's side airbag, electric sunroof and optional air conditioning. It boasted improved handling and had a longer nose to include a crushable area at the front. Included in the range was a 1.9 diesel which would later be turbocharged to give it a performance of a car with its petrol counterparts.
Fiesta designers have sought to keep ahead of the competition with style, design and superior engineering and have set the pace in the small car class. of many annual festivals celebrating everything Ford shaped is Fiesta in the Park in Kettering. Over a thousand UK cars come through the gates as owners polish and prepare their pride and joy for display to friends and enthusiasts. It's a chance to compare and contrast what's new and what's cool with the classic pop catch. Every time it's on show, from the unspoiled lines of the original Fiesta through the range to some modified madness. Gives plenty of strength for the game. And for organizer Sarah Church, the sunshine and a huge turnout for a perfect attempt to months preparation. Just seeing everybody here, seeing all the gleaming cars, all the different ones, um, and exactly what you can do to a car and seeing everybody happy. Yeah, there's lots of cars with body kits, um, alloy wheels, quite a few have got um, the engine upgrades as well. There isn't anything you can't do to afford. The proof of that pudding is certainly on display at Wicksteed Park. Like this unexpected Mark 1 pickup, sitting on a Land Rover chassis, affectionately known as Little Foot, after its larger American car. And there are some rare, even distant models here, like this Mark 2 Fiesta Cabriolet. Um, it's bought from brand new, uh, 950 from Ford, converted to uh, the convertible it is now by Crayford. Um, there's about 20 made from what we've believed, but Crayford have denied making anything of a Mark II convertible. Had Fiesta since I was 16. First love and always stuck with them. 1.1L, um, Poplar Plus, mostly Mark 1s, XR2s, um, Super Sports, you name it, I've had it, just about every model. Well, it's a 1981 Fiesta Super Sport. Uh, originally, there were only 3,000 of them made, so a bit unsure of how many is left. Uh, talks of a couple of hundred. I mean this is quite original, it's been looked after by a, an elderly gentleman so fortunate to drop on it because a lot of them uh, got, did get abused in 80s and 90s so so yeah so I'm quite pleased with it. Uh, I originally got into super sports just a bit of an hobby so I've not really been into Ford's too long. Uh, the last couple of years I've been attending all the shows and try and get out and about in various different parts. One of the great attractions Ease of modification and its ability to take on a variety of characters. Many owners take a basic model and spend long, loving years turning into something special. Just a full Fiesta pop, no heated rear screen, nothing, just a basic Mark II Fiesta. Right, it's got a roll cage, 
bucket seats, uh, Mark 1 XR2 1600 engine, bored out to a 1700, uh, five speed gearbox, all the backs being boarded out with like amp in the middle, speakers, uh, made the door cards and that from scratch, and the dash cut the centre air vent out, and put uh, gauges in it. So I've only done 300 mile in it, and that's coming up here. So I'm still running in at the minute, doing 60. <laughs> Absolutely everything, full body kit, my one-off bonnet, full install, no back seats. The engine's next. I want to get a Puma engine put in it. Well, I had the uh, Mark IV before, and I modded all that up. I just thought, no, I need something a bit quicker, so I just went for the 1.6. Originally, what appealed to me about the ZTEC S is that it's quite a nippy little car, and its insurance grip's quite low as well. On standard, they look really nice anyway, so that attracts you. I started with the body kit, put that on, and I went for the dual exhaust. And I put some 17 inch wheels on it, uh, WRC spoiler, let's move the boot over uh, and I thought I'll start on the interior so I went for a custom boot build. It's all audio barn stuff, a uh, company in Milton Keynes called Audio Vibe fitted it all. Um, it's basically just two audio barn 12 inch subs, uh, kicker impulse front components and then custom mounted 6x9s in the rear panel. I do drive it, I don't think he likes me driving it but I do. <laughs> It is a fun car to drive. I really do enjoy driving it. I've got a Mark VI Fiesta myself, body kit and everything. It's just compared to this, you know, it's nothing. It's so fun to drive this. I'm John Lawson, and this is my Mark V Fiesta ZTEC S 1.616 valve. Um, so this is what I've done to the engine. Um, obviously, I've got some cow houses, um, which I've got for the Mark V Fiesta. Um, spark out strut brace, magnet core leads, blue fin super chips. Um, bigger air filter. In the interior, I've just put, um, going for like the racy look, which is like D-shaped steering wheel, um, sports seats, four-point harnesses, um, carbon fibre dash uh, cover over there. It's gone really for the racy look, racing pedals, gauges. So with the boot, all I've done, really stripped out the back seats, um, just for lightness, to save, you know, save weight, make it a little quicker. Um, put a rear strut brace in, uh, to strengthen the body up, so obviously it's got no seats in it, so it needs to be strengthened up. Um, it's gone for like a graphite floor and a rear cage in the back. With the way the car goes, I mean, we've sort of stripped it out, so it's a lot quicker response. We're 103 brakes standard, um, this is probably about 128 brakes up to the chip, filter and the exhaust. And obviously, we're saving the weight, we, you know, shared a couple of seconds up to 60. We brought it from six months old on a, on a W reg to start with. Uh, it took, took three years, but each year I've changed it to give it a different theme. Um, just, you know, instead of buying a new car, just change the style of the car instead. I still like the car, so I can't see the point in getting rid of it. It's just, you know, fun to drive and everything like that. But it doesn't stop there. Those with the desire for a truly fast and furious Fiesta, anything can be achieved. This is the Puma 1.7 engine. It's got the variable cam timing. Um, I've also had a uh, Puma build ECU fitted, so it gives it that bit more push. Um, I've got an induction kit so it breathes a bit better, and uh, I use the same exhaust that I had on my 1.6 engine. The, the 1.6 ran about 103 as standard from the factory, um, but this is running about 140. But uh, this week I've had a new little toy fitted, my little nitrous kit. And at the moment we've got uh, 100 brake horsepower sh shot of nitrous on it. We think that it's running about 180 brake horsepower at the moment. This is the nitrous bottle. I've currently got a show bottle there, nice and bling bling. Also, as you can see, an upgraded stereo system with CD changer and amp to power the sub. Started off with a few little mods like uh, changing the gear knob, steering wheel. Um, I've also put Puma alloy dash bits in. Um, more recently, some nice KA racing seats. We've got an ultra safe system, well, as safe as a nitro system can be. It's on a progressive controller where it, it sprays so much in and then it builds it up um, as the engine's building up as well. Uh, so you've got the power all the way through the rest. Odds and all, the Fiesta has a lasting appeal and affordability which make it loved by drivers of all ages.
Ford Fiesta. Rock solid. driving the latest version of the Fiesta and of course the Fiesta is an important car from many points of view. For learner drivers it's often the first taste of motoring that they have and perhaps it's a first car, perhaps it's the car used by the driving school when you're taking your very first tentative steps onto the road so it has to be easy to drive. How does this one feel? I have to say it feels pretty good at the moment, the clutch is nice and light, the gear change is very light, very easy, you don't have to put much effort into it at all. The steering has quite a meaty feel to it, but it is power steering, doesn't require an awful lot of effort. And the visibility is excellent too, and of course, when you're driving a car for the first time, it's very useful to be able to see around you. So I have to say, from that point of view, it's all looking good to me so far. Now the version of the new Fiesta we're driving here today is the diesel version. There was no diesel when the Fiestas first came out, but at this day and age of course, diesel technology has improved massively. Fuel economy is crucial and this is the 1.4 engine with a common rail diesel, the latest technology. And I tell you what, it really does go. Good acceleration, good pull, all the way up through the revs. A little bit noisy perhaps, but that's perhaps the payoff of the common rail diesel technology. But the go, the acceleration, is everything you'd need. Now we're just cruising around at the moment, taking it nice and steady, coming through some of the pretty little villages in Anglesey. The ride, I have to say, is quite impressive. It's a very well damped ride. That means that it doesn't bounce around and float around over the little bumps and crests that we're going over. It's quite a smooth ride. A small car, it's always hard to get a very smooth ride because there's not a huge amount of weight. But I have to say, I'm finding this pretty comfortable. The seats are comfortable too. Good driving position. So it's the sort of car I really feel I could do a high mileage in every day and not get out and feeling really stiff and awkward. It's a, it is a comfortable car to drive. So we know it's a fairly comfortable, fairly easy car to drive, but one of the things about being a Fiesta, it's got to be fun to drive. Let's try it. a bit more stick now, down into the right-hander, yeah, nice feel to it. Good turn into the corners, very composed, and that good damping is really working, the handling's good. Brakes, nice solid feel to the brakes, down the dip a little bit, really does feel very composed, no problem at all, soaks up the bumps well, and again, good solid feel from that brake pedal as we're coming down to the stopping zone. The driving environment of the new Fiesta is very comfortable, I have to say. It's quite easy to adjust. The seat goes up and down. You've got the normal rake adjustment on the back as well. And we can also affect the rake of the steering wheel. We've got quite a range of adjustment on that. So it's pretty easy to get a decent driving position that you're comfortable with. Nice and clear instruments as ever. Uh, we always expect that from Ford. We've got it here too. We've got the speedo on the right. We've got the rev counter on the left. Very simple, very straightforward. Radio down here in the middle, it's a little bit blockish in design, not perhaps the most attractive, but it is effective. And everything else to hand, the instruments as ever, the wipers, the lights, the indicators, all very much to hand. So it's, it's a very friendly driving environment, I'd say. 
away from the cockpit and the controls, one of the most crucial parts of this car is the engine, the 1.4 litre turbo diesel TDCI turbo direct common rail fuel injection. Don't know how I remembered all that, but we got there anyway. Coming around to the side, I'm pretty impressed with the quality of the build too. Listen to the clunk, nice and solid. We can open the boot from here too, on the button on a dashboard, and round to the back, you can see that there's plenty of space here for a super mini. I'm pretty impressed with that. You're going to get a lot of bags in there. I have to say I like the look of the latest Fiesta. It's a bit more sharp edged and to me it goes back to the early days of the Fiesta, which was a bit more angular and a bit more sharp edged as well. But it's nice to see the cues from the design department at Ford with that familiar now arc style grille, which is a part of the whole Ford range. Well, this diesel engine goes, shall we bring it to a stop? Diesels aren't supposed to be that fast really, are they? Let's see what it'll do. Gets off the line pretty well, and that turbo you can feel cutting in pretty much straight away. There's no lag on the throttle, it just pulls and pulls and pulls. And of course, being a diesel, we're not revving quite as high as a petrol engine. I'm only revving this to about four and a half. It'll go a bit more than that, but that feels about right. But already we're up to an indicated 60 mile an hour. I better back off. So what are my thoughts on driving this car then? Well I have to say I've really enjoyed it, it's been great fun. It's a, it is an easy car to drive, exactly what a Fiesta should be, but there's also some fun to it. It's an entertaining chassis, it's a good little engine, this diesel really does power well, and you know that you're not going to be using too much fuel. So as a package I have to say that the latest Fiesta upholds the honour of a whole generation of cars that we've enjoyed since the late 70s. Ford Fiesta dreams of showing you what it's made of. In the 70s and 80s, Fiesta's sporty potential was put to the test on the World Rally Stage and the race of the Twin Series. XR2, XR2i and turbo versions made young drivers very happy indeed. And it's no surprise that only 20 years later, they're still being a part of our research. base level car to build on motorsport, uh, the Fiesta platform uh, as, a, as a motor car in its own right, right from the inception of the Mark I Fiesta has always lent itself to motorsport. Ford used the car in rallying in the early days but Fiestas in, um, in, in the intervening years have always been a good affordable way to go racing. People love the entertainment of it, it's, it's great entertainment, great fun, it's good for the spectators, good for the drivers and also it's very economical because they're almost road going cars. Uh, really stock uh, vehicles so parts off the shelf uh, racing isn't cheap but this is probably one of the cheapest forms um, because you know, there's not many modified parts on the car a little bit more power will be better but the handling the suspension the brakes and obviously the Dunlop slick tires are very very good um, no problem at all there's no really weak point on the car 
The gearboxes do take a little bit of a stress, obviously, with the slick tyres. Oh, it's excellent. The suspension really is very good on these, and the brakes, although they don't look particularly big, they're surprisingly powerful, and it, it really is a nice car to drive. Very, very stiffly sprung. It's quite, quite different to the Road Fiesta, but it is, it is a really good race car. Grassroots motorsport, motor racing in Fiestas or any sort of Ford is very appealing. Um, I've got 120 drivers that I currently look after, so I know that's successful. The year-on-year -year grid averages are improving, whereas perhaps others in other parts of motorsport are decreasing or in decline. We're finding the opposite, so I would say racing a Ford is obviously a good thing to do. The Fiesta Championship features a large field of Fiestas battling their way around. We have two classes, Class A and Class B. Uh, class A being the earlier cars that ran in Toka, uh, the 1800cc cars. They um, don't handle quite as well as the 1400cc cars and uh, as will be seen with the racing today, the 1400s handling helps them and their lap times are almost identical on a twisty circuit. In the XR Challenge, the playing field will be leveled this season between the twos and the threes. Warriors love the chance to go out and mix it on the track. It does get very close, very exciting. All of our four championships are close and exciting, but the XR Challenge is perhaps more historic based now, uh, and it's good to see so many of those old cars still out and giving entertainment to spectators. It is getting a bit harder to get, uh, you know, get bits for them because you know these, these are like 20-year-old cars now. Um, but you know, we, we still manage and we still keep going out and we still battling them. I mean, they've got the great fun. I mean. The, the escorts are just as much fun, but the, the, in the dry, the Fiesta's handles so much better. Um, and they're thinking about making it just one championship next year between the twos and the threes. Because um, the, the twos used to just walk away with it off the grid from the, from the threes, but they've now given them a diff. Uh, Perspex windows to make them lighter, different fuel tanks, super soft tyres. Um, so they have now gained us back, and it's, it's pretty, pretty evenly matched now. It's not just about the car, it's about the driver's too. To some, it's a passion of hobby, but others set their sights on the big time. Yeah, well, for me, it's a great step to go towards touring cars. I mean, coming out of carts, and the Fiesta obviously used to be run with the Toka series with the touring cars. It's a, it's a great first step in the cars and on a uh, sort of a rung on the ladder on the way to touring cars. Well, I always wanted to do it. And about 10 years ago, I went through the school at Brands Hatch uh, and really have raced nothing else but Fiestas. Um, racing the Ford Saloons, had some good success there and then wanted to go into one mate because one mate racing really sorts the men out from the boys and uh, as, uh, as we've seen and as I've experienced over the last few years. I mean I stopped driving sort of two years ago to more get the team up and running but standing on the pit lane is worse than being out there so I'd rather be out there and keep looking and counting the cars as they come by so I'd much rather be out there and uh, have to worry afterwards. What everyone in the paddock has in common is the love of the car and the thrill of the race. But as long as there's a challenge for the, the, the old XR2s and the XR3s, and you know, I'll stay in it because I, I do love the, love the car. It, it does drive so, so well, and um, I just, just, you know, love the cars. They just corner so well, they just drive so well. You can push them to the limit and they just won't go. And they're just really good cars to drive. Interior displays a performance look, bright work on the
ST looks to put four back in the small performance car map. Fiesta range will continue to woo the carbine public well.